Today on The Joy of Editing, Lightroom Classic gets a big update. This is version 12.3. I'll be going over a lot of the new features today. You don't want to miss this one. I'm your host, Dave Kelly. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to The Joy of Editing. I'm your host, Dave Kelly. I'm excited about this uh, video today. Lightroom Classic gets a really big update. We now have AI-powered noise reduction. That's really cool. We have uh, new masking updates. We can now use curves with masking. That is really big. Uh, there's some other things here that are small but big to me, and I will show you all those. So let's get started. I'll start out with AI-powered noise reduction, and then I'll work my way down this list. Now watch the entire video. You don't want to miss a thing. Hey, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification, and please leave comments and questions. I'd love to hear from you. You're going to find the AI noise reduction in the detail module, so open up the detail module, and you're going to see it right here, denoise. You also have manual noise reduction. If you click on the triangle, you can see you can do manual noise reduction, but to do the AI, you're going to click here. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is right clicking on your image and clicking on enhance. That's another way. That's probably the way I would do it. And the other way is to come up here to photo and you're going to see enhance right here. So you could click on that. So you can click here again. You can right click here, click enhance, or you can click denoise here. Let's start out by clicking denoise and see what happens here we get an enhanced preview. The enhanced feature lets us either denoise, work with raw details, which helps us to reduce artifacts and increase detail, or we could do super resolution. Denoise, however, always works with raw detail. If I uncheck denoise, you notice now raw details is checked on. Now, if I don't want to use raw details, but super resolution, I can uncheck raw details, and then I can check on super resolution. If I don't want to use super resolution, but I want to use denoise, just uncheck this and click on denoise. But if you click this denoise here, it'll automatically check on denoise for you. And that is the AI powered denoise noise reduction. I'm going to click cancel. And if I right click and click on enhance here, it will default to the last enhance feature that you used. The default setting for this slider is 50. If you change it and you ever want to set it back to the default, just double click on this circle and it'll go back to 50. But you have this amount slider, so it's very easy to work with. One thing I want to note is denoise always works with the raw details. You could use raw details on its own, but whenever you use denoise, it uses raw details with it. Also, I want to point out is the super resolution cannot be combined with denoising. It's one or the other. This window that you see here, this is really zoomed in. I don't know what the percentage of the zoom is on this, but it's really a tight zoom. If you want to see different parts of your image, you can click this magnifying glass, the minus here. And then you see you have the cursor here. You can come up here and click another area and you can see what it's doing here. And this is important because if you drag this slider back, you can see there's noise in there. By the way, this is a very high ISO image. It's 12,800 shot on a Canon 5D Mark II. But you could drag this slider across and you can see how much noise you want to keep in there. You may want to get rid of it all. If you take it over to 100%, it's going to get rid of all the noise. Let's go to another area like right here and you can see it's removed every bit of that noise. But sometimes you may want just to leave a little bit of that noise in there. In fact, I probably would. I'd probably leave just a tiny minute amount. So maybe somewhere right around like 82, I think is good. And then all you have to do is click enhance, but it's going to give you an estimation here. It says estimated time 35 seconds. Now, if we look at this information up here, it says enhance uses AI to improve image quality. And that's dealing with all the different features inside of enhance here, raw detail, super resolution, denoise. The result will be saved as a new DNG. And if I hover over the information, Right here, the eye, it says reduces noise while preserving detail, ideal for photos taken in low light conditions or using a high ISO image. So you may not want to use it all the time, but you might only want to use it for your higher ISO images. 
it's not as elaborate as, say, like a Topaz Denoise AI or a Photo AI. It doesn't give you all those extra sliders in here, but it is really good and it does a really nice job. After you've set the amount slider, click Enhance, and you'll notice the progress bar up here. It's going to take approximately 35 seconds to do. And now you can see it down here in my thumbnails, and you'll notice it says Enhanced nr for noise reduction and it's a dng now let's do some pixel peeping so i have the image right here so let me go ahead and zoom in to the image i'm zoomed in at 300 percent so we can see what kind of job it's done yeah it's done a really nice job so just study it there it looks really good and now i'm going to go ahead and come up here to view and make sure i have lock zoom position checked on and that's nice because if I click on the second image, which is the original RAW file, now we can see all that noise that's in there. And if I click on the first image, this is the one with the noise reduction. So pretty cool. So let's, let's go to a different part of the image, like down into here. So here's the original, and here is with noise reduction. So I haven't had a chance to really try it out a whole lot but so far i think it's doing a really good job you won't find all the extra added features that you'll find in say like a photo ai or a denoise ai but you know it's very effective and it will get the job done and also the ai denoising only works on raw files whereas photo ai and denoise ai will work on jpegs and tiffs as well so that is the new AI-powered denoising found inside of this new update. Now we're going to move on to some other new features, but isn't that cool having AI-powered denoising right inside of Lightroom? Pretty cool stuff. Next up, some exciting new masking features found in this new update. I chose this image for my thumbnail, but also to show you some of the new masking features. So let's click on the masking icon. The first feature I want to show you deals with people. And you'll notice that Lightroom has found one person here. And if I hover over the circle, you can see there is the subject, the person. If I click on person one, it breaks the image down into all its various parts, as you can see right here. Right now, I have checked on entire person, but here are the two new features, facial hair and clothes. Let me click on facial hair. And now let me click on create mask. This is not a masking tutorial. I'm just showing you some new features here, but you can see we've created a mask here. Here's my mask and here's the facial hair inside of it right here. But here's what I wanna show you that is new. And this is super exciting for me and I hope it is for you too. If it is, let me know in the comment section below. And that is this, we can now do curves adjustments. We've had this feature in Camera Raw, but now it is brought over into Lightroom Classic. And this is exciting to me. So now we can do curves adjustments. For instance, if I want to lighten up this beard, I could pull up in this curve and just lighten up that beard. You see that? Or I could darken it up by pulling down on the curve. Next, I want to show you some new portrait adaptive presets. So let me go ahead and click on delete all masks. And now my masks are gone. And now if we come over here to presets and click on presets, you're going to find inside of adaptive portrait, we have some new presets. And here are the new presets. We have Polished Portrait. If I hover over that, you can see the change. We have Darkened Beard, and we also have Enhanced Clothes. So those are the new presets. Let me click on Polished Portrait. And now we can see all the various masks that it has made here. And let's, for instance, go to, oh, let's just pick one. How about hair? I'm gonna hover over the hair mask, and you can see there's the hair. And if I click on this, if we open up Tone, we can see it has made some adjustments in here. It has uh, pulled the shadows back a little bit to darken up the hair. And that's basically all it did. I looked at some of these other ones here and nothing else it has changed. But you could go in here and play around. For instance, you could come in and go to Curve. And we can pull down on this curve and darken that hair up a little more. Or maybe lighten it up a little bit, you know. Maybe darken it and maybe pull up on the highlights a little bit. Maybe something like that. And then we could click this eyeball. Just left click it with your mouse and hold it down. There's the before and there's the after. So you can play around with all this stuff. And don't forget you have this amount slider here. If you pull this the whole way to the left, you're basically shutting off the effect. 
And then when you start to drag it to the right, you can kind of like adjust the opacity, just like you do in a layer in Photoshop. For instance, you could drag it the whole way up. But say it's too strong, you may want to ease back on it a little bit. Now on this preset, we have all these different masks and we can go and click on any one of the masks and we could change or alter the adjustments or add to the adjustments, whatever you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and clear all these masks. So I'm just going to click on delete all masks. And I want to show you something new in the history. This is a new addition. Let's go ahead and click on subject. We'll select our subject here and there's our subject and there's the mask for it. And now let's go ahead and add another mask. So let's click on create mask. And this time I'll click on select background. And now I have a background mask. Now let me close presets and I want to show you something here. If we go into history, this is new. Anytime you add a new mask, it's going to show up in your history. In other words, right here it says add subject, add background. So that's kind of nice. That's something new. And this is something, this is a bonus. This is something I found out. A lot of you may already know this is here, but I thought this was cool. What if I wanted to go back to the beginning of this image? For instance, I don't want any of these adjustments. If you right click on any one of these history states, for instance, if I right click on import and click clear history above this step, I can clear out the entire history above that step. Or you could do it with just one click. Hold your option or alt key down and click on any step and it'll remove everything above it. For instance, if I hold my option key down and click import, you can see it's eliminated all the history above there. And I find this very handy, especially if you decide, well, you know what? I don't want all those steps and I don't want all that history in there. It's confusing. So you could clear out the stuff that you don't want. I'm going to go ahead and go to the edit panel by clicking this icon. And now we're back to the editing panel and you'll notice we now have eyeballs here and you notice they're all grayed out because this was a stock image and I don't have any adjustments on it. But anytime you open up one of these panels, like the basic panel and say, for instance, I adjust the exposure, maybe give it a little more contrast, maybe uh, darken up the shadows a little bit and maybe add a little bit of texture to it. Okay. Now you can see that eyeball is active. And then I may want to come down to the tone curve and maybe just give it a little lift on the tone curve like that. Maybe pull the shadows down a little bit more, something like that. I know it's a stupid edit, but I'm just showing you something here. But now you can see I have a active eye here on basic and one on tone curve. These other ones aren't showing anything because they're not adjusted. And now you could see the before and after just by left clicking with your mouse and holding it down. There's the before the basic. Release, there's the after. Here's the before the tone, tone curve. I'm just going to click down, hold the left click down, and then release it. You can see the after. Now, here's a little tip for you. You might be saying, hey, I like these new eyes, but you know what? Where's the switch in case I want to shut one of these adjustment groups off? Well, it's there, but it's hidden. If you hold your Option or Alt key down, notice the switch has all come back, except for the basic panel. You can never shut the basic panel off, by the way. But if I want to shut off this tone curve, I can just click on this toggle and shut that off. But now you'll notice there's no adjustment here on this tone curve. But if I hold that option key down or alt key, click this again, there's my adjustment. It comes right back on. So that's kind of nice to know that it's there. So remember, if you want to shut off one of your adjustment groups or turn a group on, just hold down your option or alt key and you could turn it off or on just like that. Two more very important changes and we will be done. Now this first one deals with smart objects. We can now open multiple images up as smart objects as layers in Photoshop. For instance, if I command or control click on this middle image and command or control click on the first image, they're all selected. Now I don't know why I would ever want to open all three of these up as smart objects as layers in Photoshop, but this is just to give you an idea that you can do it. All you need to do is right click on any of the images, go to edit in, and then come down and open as smart object layers in Photoshop. Just click on that. All three of those images will go into one Photoshop document as smart object layers. Now, the reason you may want to do something like that is say you're a landscape photographer and you shot one image exposed for the sky, another one exposed for the foreground. And then you want to combine those two images together. It'd be nice if they were both smart objects, 
Then if you needed to alter any of your RAW adjustments, you could open up Camera Raw and make some fine tuning adjustments. And now for all of you Photoshop beta users out there, you're going to be very happy. I'm going to go ahead and just select this one image. In the past, whenever you install Photoshop Beta and you right click on an image and go to edit in, it's always going to give you this option for Photoshop Beta, which is kind of a pain and you all know that. But there is a fix for that. Thank you Adobe for fixing this and I'll show you what that is. Now I'm on a Mac computer so your settings are going to be different on a PC. I'm not sure where you'll find them, but you know where they're at. But for me, I come up and click on Lightroom Classic and go to Settings. And what you want to do is go to External Editing. And now we have this new feature here. See where it says Photoshop Version? You can click this drop down. Right now it's on Photoshop Beta. Check this out. You can click on Adobe Photoshop 2023. Or I have 2019 still in here. I don't know why, but I'll probably never use it. But it's there. I'll probably get rid of that later. But anyway, here's Photoshop 2023. I want that to be my default Photoshop for edit in. So click on that. And now I can just X out of here. Now, when I go ahead and right click and go to edit in, you'll notice now I have Photoshop 2023, which is really nice. And also, if you click on open as a smart object in Photoshop, which I'll go ahead and do this, I'll click this before it would open up Photoshop beta as well which was a pain but now you can see it's opening up photoshop 2023 and in a second here you will see it will be a smart object and now you can see my smart object is opened up inside of photoshop 2023 thank you so much adobe for making this happen if you're like me and you like to play around with photoshop beta just to see all the new features then you will love this new change in Lightroom Classic. Well, there it is, everyone, the big update for Lightroom Classic. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.